Hey guys, this is Gary, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a, a realistic looking tile floor like this. So here was the original image. Here's the floor. So basically, that's what we're going to do using, under filter, vanishing point. <clears throat> now, unfortunately for you Elements users, there is no vanishing point filter. So this is pretty much a Photoshop thing. I should tell you that you can create a floor like this in Elements, but it's a little more complicated and more time consuming and I don't have time to go over both. So this is for Photoshop users using the vanishing point filter. All right, the very first thing you want to do before you even get started is create a um, an accurate selection of the floor. So here's what I did uh, to get Okay, so you can see I have a good selection of the floor. Before you do anything else, you want to do that. Now, if you don't know how to do that, um, I have some videos on selections at meetyourcamera.com. You can just do a search for selections and masks. Or look, there's got to be hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube on selections. Either way, you want to create in your image an accurate selection of the floor. So it's worth your while to spend some time getting that selection right. So as you can see, I have selected the floor here. Okay, I'm going to deselect for now. And the other thing is I needed a pattern. And here's the pattern that I created. So I'm going to show you very quickly how to do that. It's pretty simple, really. You just create a blank layer and take your rectangular marquee tool, hold down the shift key to create a perfect square. You then fill that perfect square with whatever color you want. I chose black. So there it is. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to deselect, grab my move tool, hold down the alt key, and click and drag until I get, I want to, you can feel it snap to the corners as long as you have view snap on okay so now I've got this uh, two squares on separate layers uh, by clicking uh, with the move tool and dragging with the alt key held down it creates a copy on a new layer so here's the new layer it's called layer one copy I'm going to hold down the shift key select the layer below it which is the first square and I'm going to go command or control E to merge those two into one layer like so okay having done that I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go Move Tool, holding down the Alt key. That creates a copy. Snap to the corners. Merge. Like so. Do it again. Hold down the Shift key. Now I'm holding down the Shift key to keep my vertical positioning exact. Okay, so now I have this. I'm going to merge these two layers together. Command or Control E. So now I'm going to move this up to the corner and basically um, go free transform, which is command or control T. And I'm going to shrink these down, holding down the shift key, something like that. I'm just eyeballing it. Okay, that's good. And then I do the same process again. Hold down the alt key, move tool, keep going. Merge, Alt key, Move tool. So you just keep going, okay, until you've got a pattern like this. Okay, that's what I did. All right, hope that's clear. It's, it's easy to do. So you need a pattern. Okay, so now I'm going to go... Command or Control A to select all. So I got marching ants around the whole thing. Then Command or Control C to copy. That's important. You want to copy this layer to the clipboard. All right, I'm going to turn off that layer's visibility. I'm going to turn on um, my bottom layer, deselect. Now, I'm going to create a new blank layer, and I'll call it floor. It's very important you create a new blank layer because you want to have the vanishing point lay the floor on a new layer. So now, having a new blank layer selected, I'm going to go vanishing point, and I'm going to start 
see this back wall? I'm going to go right at the bottom of the wall, draw a straight line across to about there, I guess, and then try and mimic the perspective of the image, come across. like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. All right, so now I've got a decent perspective. I just need to drag this over, drag this over. Now what I'm going for here, I want to get this point and this point close to the edge of the frame, or at least beyond the back wall here in the image, right? Okay, so that should work. I got to tell you, this thing is a little finicky, I guess would be the word. So I'm looking at my lines here, and they're not, I don't like the way they're lining up, so let me alter, I'm taking my left control point and moving it in. Okay, I like the way the lines are converging. Okay, so now I'm going to paste, this is why it was important to copy the clipper, I'm going to paste that um, pattern into this document. Now, here's the thing. If you don't know that that's what you have to do, this filter is useless, and there's no visual prompt. There's no menu command for paste. You have to know the key command because... Edit paste is grayed out, and the menu over here has no paste command. So come on, Adobe, give us a paste command. Anyway, so now I'm going to grab this pattern and drag it into this frame. Now, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There, boom, it worked. Okay, good. So now I've got my floor, basically. That's it. So I'm going to hit OK, and there's my floor. Okay, so here's why it was important to have a selection because we need to mask out where we don't want the floor. So with the floor layer selected, I'm going to go to select, load selection. There's my floor selection. Okay, so now all I need to do is click on add layer mask. And you may or may not know that when you have an active selection and you click on add layer mask from the layers panel, it'll, it'll translate that selection into a layer mask and boom there we go so now i've got my floor i've got everything masked out that i don't want it's looking pretty good yeah i like it uh, if i zoom in close it's not the mask isn't perfect so i need to fix something here so i'm going to grab my um polygonal lasso tool i'm going to make a very quick selection along this area right here, come down, come across, close it off, and fill that selection with white. There we go. That's better. Next step would be to create a new blank layer below this floor layer. We're going to call this, I don't know, white, I guess, or pattern. We're going to call this pattern. And we're going to fill it with an off-white. So I'm going to select this just a little bit of yellowish white. And I'm going to fill the entire layer with that by going Alt-Delete. Or I could come up here to Edit Fill. And I want to use the foreground color. Hit OK. There we go. All right, except I want to have that mask. So I'm basically going to click on the mask of the floor layer, hold down the Alt key, and drag down. There we go. So now I've got my white tiles, I've got my black tiles, but I want to go a step further and create a pattern. So I'm going to go to the FX tab at the bottom of my Layers panel and choose Pattern Overlay. And it's going to give me this hideous purple pattern. You want to choose, I believe it's this one right here. And then if I scale it up, you can see it has kind of a marble look, which is really cool. But it's too much, so I'm going to back off on its opacity. That'll kind of lay it in against that off-white background. There we go. That looks like marble. Pretty cool, right? Let me lower the um, scale a little bit. That looks like a marble floor. 
perfect. Hit OK. OK, so now the reflections. Here's the thing. Um, we want to create a duplicate of this layer here. And uh, but we don't want the floor. OK, we don't want the floor. I'm going to go Command J to duplicate the layer. And Alt drag that mask to copy it. There we go. OK, so if we just look at this layer, it's wrong. So I'm going to go Command I to make them. There we go. So I made the mask opposite or inverted the mask by going Command I. So now the floor is masked out. That's what we want. So this is a copy of the layer. So now I'm going to turn on the bottom layer, turn on all the layers. Doesn't matter. I'm going to take this layer, which is the copy, and I'm going to go free transform, flip vertical. I'm going to drag it down. Now I'm going to change this layer stacking order above everything so you can actually see it. And then I'm going to take my move tool and I'm going to kind of move it into place like that. All right, it looks really weird. Bear with me. So we're going to we're going to zoom way out because we need a lot of room here. And I'm going to go once again free transform. And this time I'm going to click in the picture. Now, if you click outside the picture, you get nothing. You have to click in the picture, but inside the transform frame and go perspective. Now, what I'm going to do is alter the perspective so we get, you know, the same kind of diagonal positioning. And now I can zoom in. It's a little off, so let me move the perspective in. I want to match that. Oh, that is perfect. Bring it down a little bit more like that. OK, that's, that's pretty good. Let me pull this one out a little bit. Perfect. OK, I'm going to commit that by hitting the checkbox. So now we have this reflection, and I'm going to lower its opacity to about 50%. So now look at that. Pretty cool, right? Except we don't have a reflection here. That's pretty simple. Another new layer. Grab the Clone Stamp tool, and I'm going to clone this fireplace by Alt-clicking. And I'm just going to sort of come right down and print that. Then I'm going to go free transform, flip vertical. Distort. I want it to slant out like this. Take my eraser, erase all this stuff here. Okay, now, new layer, back to the clone stamp tool. I'm going to clone this whole thing here, come down and print it. just like that. Free transform, flip vertical, pull it down a bit like that. Okay, now I'm going to take my eraser tool and kind of erase and then change its opacity to 50%. Ah, perfect. That looks so good. One more, new layer, Clone Stamp Tool. Just grab this whole area here. Alt-click. Come down here and print it. And I'm not even going to bother um, uh, inverting it. I'm just going to lower its opacity to like 50%. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, maybe 40%. Yeah, these, all these layers should be like about 40%. Yeah, good. All right. Nice. Real nice. Okay, so I'm going to merge all these reflected layers together. These four layers. Just go Command-E, merge them together. So before reflection, after reflection. Now I can change the opacity to taste. That looks good to me. All right, so... Yeah, nice. I like this. Okay, there you go. 
So that's how you would add a brand new floor to an image using the relatively awesome uh, vanishing point filter. Although I should warn you, it's a little kludgy and a little buggy. Sometimes it just doesn't work. You may have to try it a few times to get it to work right. But uh, once you get it going, it's a great way to add a floor to an image. All right, guys, now you go make something. See ya.